Hi, I'm Ella Watts. I'm the head of production for Six to Start. That's the company that makes Marvel Move and Zombies Run. Today, I'm going to give you a tip about directing audio drama. I'm also a freelance director and producer who specializes in audio drama. So I've moved 34 times in 29 years. I grew up in the UK, Australia, and Hong Kong. And the one thing that was a through line for me was BBC Radio 2, which my parents would obsessively listen to online, in the car, like we would just wherever we were, they would find a way to listen to the BBC. And so for me, radio became not only that classic sense of companionship, but also in a lot of ways, like radio was my community. It was my connection to any one place or culture because I didn't have anything else. And so I obsessively listened to radio all my life. And then when I went to university, I met one of my closest friends, a Swedish woman who'd become obsessed with cabin pressure, who asked me whether I'd heard of cabin pressure and sent it over to me. And I listened to it and I loved it. My dad was a pilot, so it was especially relevant to us. And that led me onto a kind of internet deep dive that led me to finding some of the earlier days of podcasting. So this was in 2012, so it wasn't, you know, the early, early days. But I found shows like Our Fair City, The Thrilling Adventure Hour, The Leviathan Chronicles, We're Alive. And I really enjoyed all of those. I can still sing the tune for Sparks Nevada, Marshall on Mars um, from The Thrilling Adventure Hour. And I can still do the opening bit of What Evil Lurks in the Hearts of Men. Who cares? It's not the martini tray, darling. Like, Lord, um, I was obsessed. But then from there... On Tumblr, people started getting really obsessed with Welcome to Night Vale. And I saw all of this beautiful art for Welcome to Night Vale. And because I saw the art, I decided to listen to the show. And then that was me. I started listening to Night Vale a couple of months after the first episode came out. And then I listened to it obsessively through to their first year anniversary when they did this little message at the end that has since been replaced by dynamic advertising where they said, oh, you know, we're going to have this meetup in a bar in New York. And, you know, if anyone wants to come along, just let us know. And then the next week was like, wow, a hundred people showed up. Can you believe it? And then a year later, they'd like sold out a room at Comic-Con and you could just hear this massive crowd. And it was ridiculous and amazing. I was at the very first Night Vale live show when they came to the UK. I was just completely in love. And my obsession with podcast drama led me to kind of retroactively investigating the history of radio drama and listening to much more radio drama all the way back to the 1920s. And that's been me ever since. I started out on an LGBTQ plus show called Shout Out. I loved working there. It was part of Bristol Community Radio. From there, I went on to do a master's degree in radio at Goldsmiths. I was a runner on a drama called Wooden Overcoats. And things have just sort of spiraled from there. I worked for the BBC. I worked for BBC Sounds, BBC Studios. One thing that I love about podcasting is how open it is, especially in drama. The kinds of stories that get told are often much more radical than the stories that you see in other media because there isn't as powerful an advertising or commercial imperative. Frankly, audio drama doesn't often make a lot of money, especially indie audio drama. But what that means is that we can tell stories about queer people and disabled people and people of color without worrying about whether or not that's going to alienate a particular advertiser's audience. And that means that the stories that get told are really radical and hopeful and interesting. My big tip about directing audio drama is do not ever say the line that you want your actor to say to them. I know it's incredibly tempting to say, no, no, it's not I'm going to the shops, it's I'm going to the shops. But when you say that, what you do is you ask your actor to imitate you instead of actually performing the sentence. And it always sounds red. You can always tell that someone is just repeating something without feeling it or thinking it or understanding the meaning of the sentence. Always try and paraphrase, never just say the line to them, the exception to this is obviously pronunciation of a word in a language they might not know, including one you made up. You can find me at ella-watts.com and you can see all of my links in the show notes. Thanks for listening to Podcasting People.
Like the sound of this episode? The Sound Boutique can help with your show too, from fixing problem audio all the way through to producing full shows. Visit thesoundboutique.com today to start a conversation. The link is in the show notes.